Hello guys, what's up? Welcome to the first episode of Coffee and Chat on my channel. My name is Reshim and for today's video, I'll be sharing with you five things that have radically improved my life and can improve yours too. So without any further ado, let's get on it. Number one, having a morning routine. So what is a morning routine? Simply put, it's a set of things that you do before you start your actual day. Now, everybody's morning routine would be different. For somebody, it could be as simple as chugging up a glass of lemon water as soon as they wake up in the morning. Whereas for another person, it could be running a 5K before going to work. I for one believe a good morning routine is the one that's crafted specifically for oneself. There's no point in copying somebody's morning routine because what works for them might not work for you. And most probably it won't because it won't cater to your specific needs, right? Now, having a solid morning routine not only helps in setting the tone for the day, but it can actually also help you be the person you want to be. Think about it. Ultimately, we all are a product of our choices and our habits. So when we make our own morning routine, we can incorporate certain habits that could help us develop certain aspects of our personality, which could eventually help us be the person we want to be. For instance, if you are somebody like me who likes to put a lot of things on her plate at once and then gets overwhelmed with all these different deadlines, especially if what you are doing are completely different things like poles apart. So to stay sane and productive, what works best for me is having a quiet, calm and relaxed morning routine, which includes journaling, meditation, going out with my dog for a peaceful walk and a 10 minute yoga stretch. And I consciously make an effort to wake up early enough to go through my entire routine before starting my actual day. So guys, why don't you make a routine for yourself, follow it through for a couple of days and then let me know how it goes. Now, if you never had a routine before, it might take some time for you to understand what works for you and what doesn't, but I truly believe it'll be worth it. And I can genuinely tell you, having a morning routine is the best thing I've ever done for myself. Number two, being mindful of what I consume. And not only in terms of food and what I'm putting in my body, but also what I'm putting in my head. Like what kind of media do I consume? What kind of movies do I watch? What kind of songs do I listen to? And what type of social media accounts do I follow? All these things matter in making or breaking your mental health and your attitude towards life and the way you live your life, you know? For example, more than a decade back, I switched watching mindless TV dramas for documentaries. And oh boy, did it teach me something? 100% yes. I still remember the first documentary I thoroughly enjoyed was An Inconvenient Truth. And after that, I watched many more on planet Earth, oceans, climate change, global warming, etc., etc. Not only did it teach me what's happening in my environment and in the world, but also how I am contributing to it. And knowledge, my friend, is power. Knowledge and awareness are the first steps to change. Now, this is not to say that I don't enjoy watching movies or like fun things. I love some good psychological thriller, horror, and true crime. But again, these genres make me think and that's what I love about them. So all in all, it's very important to be mindful of what type of media are we consuming. Now in terms of social media, I was watching a TED talk the other day and the speaker was sharing the story of this beautiful young girl. She was, I think 12 or 13. She went on social media and was asking strangers whether they think she's beautiful. And to be honest, it was so heartbreaking to see such a young, full of potential, beautiful girl getting so concerned and insecure for something as shallow as appearance. And I couldn't help but think how she could be using all this time and energy in something better, like learning something which could help us be a scientist, engineer, a pilot, or not only that, how about just being a child? Like she could be spending that energy playing, learning how to, I don't know, mountain bike or things like that or play video game or anything like that rather than just sitting and feeling so low and 
insecure about her appearance and about how other people see her. You know what happens when people go through these beautiful airbrushed images of people on social media accounts and magazine covers, especially kids. They forget that what they're looking at is not a person, it's a product. A group of people have brought together their expertise in developing this product that involves camera, specific lighting, software effects, and all of that. So what you're looking at is not a person, it's a product that has gone through a pre-production phase, production phase and post-production phase. And in today's day and age, we all have such things available like filters. So what you are looking at is not the real person. And it's very important to keep this in mind while scrolling through social media accounts. So if anyone needs to hear this, I'm here to tell you, you are beautiful. And all of us are beautiful in our own way. And nobody needs approval of another person to feel beautiful, okay? Now for sure, if someone is doing something great, take inspiration from them, acknowledge it, congratulate them. But don't go through this vicious cycle of comparing yourself to them, then getting jealous and then getting frustrated because you should be doing you because that's where your uniqueness lies. Okay. Moving on. Number three, not taking things personally. Now, of course, this is from Don Miguel's book, The Four Agreements, and it's something I'm still working on. I think we all have experienced something like where we are driving and there's this other person in the car next to you and he or she honks their horn and speeds past you and acts like they're really mad at you. Or maybe you're walking down the street and somebody passes a mean comment on you and you keep thinking, but I didn't do anything. So, no, you didn't do anything. It's not about you. You should not be taking it personally because something is happening in that other person's life that's making them frustrated and they're projecting it in the outside world. And it's not only about them, it happens with everyone. Think about it. When you are happy, you smile and you say hi to others and you're polite and all of that. But when you're frustrated, you're like, I don't want to talk to another person, right? So that's what's happening with them. It has nothing to do with you. So when such things would happen earlier, I would be really upset and like, I would be sad all day and be like, oh, this person said this to me. But now I've developed this understanding where I know that it's not about me, it's their life. And in the book, the author explains it in a very beautiful way. Like he says something in the lines of, everybody has their own movie. We are making our own movie and in our movies, we are the main character and everybody else is a secondary character. So you are a secondary character in that other person's movie. They are the main lead, right? So you don't really belong there. So it has nothing to do with you. It's their own movie. Something is going on in their movie, which has nothing to do with you. So there's no point in taking it personally then. And he also goes on to explain how actually taking everything personally is kind of selfish. Think about it. When we are taking things personally, we are actually putting ourselves in the center and thinking everything is about me, 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 me which is not true. Everything is not about you. Everybody has their own life going on and things in their life which has nothing to do with you. So stop taking things personally. Number four, journaling. And I'm not talking about a diary of what I did today and all of those things. I'm talking about thinking deep, finding your why why you do what you do, why you like what you like, why you dislike what you don't like, and why you feel the way you feel. For example, if I'm feeling sad or maybe in a funk, I would simply go, sit on my meditation pillow, take out my journal and journal my heart out. And I'll constantly ask, why? Why am I feeling that way? For instance, I'm an avid hiker and a few days back, I spontaneously created this five day five hike challenge where every day I would go for a long hike somewhere far from where I live. So on sixth day, when I did not go for a hike, I started feeling sad and overwhelmed with everything. Like if somebody is calling me, I was mad at them. I didn't want to talk to anybody, things like that. So after tolerating myself for some time, I sat on my meditation pillow, took out my journal and started journaling 
why I'm feeling this way. And I kept asking why. So of course, the first couple of answers were very superficial. Okay, I'm missing trails, I'm missing waterfalls and these scenic views and the peace and calm and quiet and all of that. But I kept digging deeper and deeper and ultimately I figured out why I was feeling that way and it had nothing to do with scenic views. Because everything stems from within, you know. Another way to journal is using journaling prompts. For example, you could ask a question like, describe one place that made you feel really happy. So a few days back when I was answering this question, the only place that kept coming to mind was this secluded cabin in the woods with its own lake. For my birthday, my dog and I escaped to this off the grid cabin in the middle of the woods and we enjoyed so much barbecuing, making s'mores on campfire, under a sky full of stars with chirping crickets, beavers, swans. And after that journaling session, I realized that's what really makes me happy. That's who I am. That's where I should be if that's what gives me happiness. So you see, journaling can make you so much self-aware when you dig deeper and ask questions instead of living your life on autopilot. Number five, nurturing a growth mindset. So I've always been fiercely ambitious and driven. And to be honest, I've always had a growth mindset. But somewhere down the line, I became my worst critic and I would literally be so mad at myself for every single mistake. For example, if I appeared for an exam and I scored 98 out of 100, I wouldn't be happy. Instead, I would be so devastated and that would turn into something like a catastrophic event. <laughs> and I would just be so mad at myself that why I couldn't answer those two questions correctly. And I realized I started having this feeling where I was either the best or good for nothing. Like there was nothing in between. Only black and white, no gray zone. And the problem with such a fixed mindset is that there's no option for growth, you know, because you're either good at something or you don't. But life doesn't work that way. After all, practice makes perfect. So I had to consciously be aware of it and tell myself and guide myself and nurture my mindset into a growth mindset where I understand that I can learn with time. I have to put in the effort and with time I'll be able to learn something new. I don't have to necessarily be great at it at my first attempt and I'm still working on it. But I'm happy that I can actually catch myself now when I'm doing something like that and when I'm going down that negativity loop so I can catch myself and correct myself. And that's what happened the other day. So I'm planning a business with my sister and I thought I'll just like do this course. It was just a week long course and I'll do this and then I'll appear for the exam and then I can start working towards it. So I complete the course and I, I appear for the exam, which was an online exam because of the pandemic. And as soon as I'd hit submit, it occurred to me that one of the answers is incorrect. And then I called my sister and I was telling her about the exam, but I was constantly stuck at that one question. And only when my sister and my brother-in-law pointed it out to me that stop talking about that question, did I realize that I'm doing it again. So whenever you're making changes, you have to be very conscious and remind yourself of the things you are doing which you shouldn't be doing and switch to the things that you want to do. So after I realized that I'm still doing it, I had to sit myself and tell myself, okay, Reshim, so you are not an expert after a week long course. Hmm, <laughs> maybe it's not too bad. <laughs> and I should be happy because I was talking about this field as if I worked in that field for I don't know how long. And before that course, like a week, before that day, for me, everything was French. Whenever my sister would talk to me in that her business language, I'd be like, what is she talking about? And just in a week, I was actually talking like an expert in the field. But yeah, of course, I am not an expert because being an expert takes time. So I had to tell myself that, Reshim, you will get there. You're not an expert after a week long course. Yes, you didn't answer one question out of 50 correctly, but that's fine you'll get there. 
So there you have it guys. I hope you got something out of this video and if you did, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe. And I would really love to hear the things that might have improved your life so I could learn something. So if you'd like to share, please do leave a comment below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.